Let's talk about blockchain and NFTs in healthcare. I'm Dr. Randy Foster here from EGP Learning. We've all been hearing a, a lot about blockchain and NFTs over the last few years, and some people believe they are going to revolutionize all sorts of industries and aspects of our lives. Uh, and including these sectors is healthcare. If you're coming from a healthcare background and don't follow the blockchain space closely, uh, then you probably make some common associations. Uh, blockchain, perhaps with cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, even Dogecoin, uh, which can seem like a volatile and unpredictable space. Um, and you probably associate NFTs with digital art, like those Bored Ape Yacht Club cartoons, perhaps, which can exchange hands for what sound like silly and large amounts of money. So what applications for these technologies are we beginning to see discussed in the healthcare sector? Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at a few of the most discussed uh, we'll talk about authentication and supply chain, electronic health records, charitable and motivational tokens. Um, so first of all, a bit of a disclaimer. Um, I'm absolutely in no way uh, an authority on any of these topics, and I'm not a financial advisor uh, either. A lot of the technical details around how these technologies actually function, I find really hard to understand and impenetrable. Uh, but it is an interesting uh, space that sounds promising, and I think that we ought to um, be aware of it and that we ought to be talking about it. Um, I think before we get to the healthcare uh, aspect of this video, uh, let's first spend a few moments revising some of the underlying principles around blockchain uh, and NFTs. Uh, so um, a blockchain is a method of storing information securely in a way that is not under the control of or influence of any single entity. Uh, a block contains data, such as how much currency is being transferred, who from and who to, uh, or perhaps even what procedure has been performed, by whom, when was it done, where was it done, um, and on whom was it done. Um, a block also contains a hash, which is um, determined algorithmically by the contents of the block. So if the contents of the block are changed, uh, the hash changes, and as we'll see later, uh, that sort of breaks the, the, the chain and is uh, part of the sort of security methodology of the blockchain. So each block contains the hash from the previous block as well, um, and these blocks are linked together in, yes, uh, chains to form a blockchain. Uh, so if someone tries to change the information in a previous block, then the hashes don't match. This cascades along the chain and the chain is, is broken. Uh, and we know that security has been compromised. Uh, multiple copies of the chain uh, exist across millions of nodes uh, on a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network. So these are when people talk about sort of Bitcoin miners, for example. This is what those miners are up to. Um, anyone can join in and anyone can participate in the process. Uh, the new blocks are distributed to the whole network and they're added to the chain. Uh, the nodes verify that all the copies match by a consensus process as the new blocks are added. Uh, now, if someone tries to change the data stored in the blockchain, then their chain becomes different from the other copies and is rejected by the network, thereby securing the network and the validity of the blockchain. So what about NFTs? Uh, NFT stands for non-fungible token. If something is fungible, then the units are interchangeable. Uh, a currency is a good example of this sort of unit. The pound in my pocket is worth the same as the pound in your bank account and the pound in anyone else's bank account. And the whole system relies on this property um, of uh, interchangeability for the financial system to function. Uh, it wouldn't work if they had different properties and, and different values. If something is fungible, then, uh, or non-fungible rather, uh, then the units are not interchangeable uh, and uh, are in fact unique. Uh, art is a good example of this. If I painted a copy of the Mona Lisa, even if it was a really, really good copy, which is improbable, then it would not be the same uh, or worth the same as the original. It would have different properties in those regards. Um, another important aspect of this technology to consider before we start talking about healthcare applications are smart contract features. Uh, these are conditional automatic actions that can be programmed uh, into a chain or token and determine how the token behaves under certain conditions and if certain things were to happen. Uh, they can become quite complex sequence of instructions that run like computer programs or applications on the blockchain itself. Um, you can view and access the information and the applications on a blockchain using wallets like uh, MetaMask, which is the most popular, I believe, at the moment. Uh, as the information on blockchains becomes more complex, the experience of using the wallet becomes akin to how we use a web browser to display the, the code from the internet as a web page and, and content on our screens. So what sort of applications for NFTs are being discussed in the healthcare space? 
Well, the first group of roles are around the concept of authentication. Uh, counterfeit medications, for example, are a big problem in some parts of the world, and blockchain and NFT technology might be able to help with that. Imagine that every batch of a medication leaving an authorized manufacturer has a unique identity represented by a QR code or RFID label. Uh, this can be scanned each time the batch moves or changes hands along the supply chain, perhaps even logging the storage conditions, such as temperature uh, of the various places that it's been. With the information being logged on a blockchain along the journey for security. When the medication reaches its final destination, uh, the trusted record can be accessed by those receiving the medication, um, individuals or organizations, and the authenticity of the medication and every step along the way from factory to uh, where it is now can be verified, including even the uh, temperature conditions so that the cold chain can be verified if that's important for the performance of that particular medication or product. Another interesting uh, uh, area being discussed uh, is the uh, verification of, say, professional qualifications or, or uh, professional uh, registers uh, that could also exist as blockchains and be sort of open source and uh, available for anybody to view and, and verify the uh, the qualifications or experience or registration of the people providing care to them, which I think is another interesting area. The big area for potential disruption is that of medical records. Uh, Medical records as they exist now can be quite fragmented with different organizations or parts of a healthcare service retaining different parts or aspects of a record. Uh, the hospital in the town where you used to live might have information about a surgical procedure you had years ago. The mental health trust might have important information about your mental health and your GP might know about an allergic reaction that you had to a medication. But these are often siloed within those individual organizations without any uh, individual set of records being able to give the complete picture. Consequently, patients can be frustrated as they're often asked to uh, answer the same questions multiple times within a, a journey through a healthcare episode. Or more seriously, errors can occur if information is not with the right professionals at the right time. This probably feels like a bit less of an issue for those of us in the UK uh, compared to other places in the world. Um, locally, the NHS has and continues to make efforts to improve healthcare record interoperability and data sharing between its different components. Uh, but in a more fragmented system, perhaps those of other countries uh, or those um, traveling from the UK outside their home country, uh, this can and will be a much bigger problem. Uh, with this information stored on a blockchain, the data would be accessible to health professionals when and wherever needed and would be able to give a more complete picture of a patient's health to them so they can provide you know, better care. Uh, summary data such as past medical and surgical history, uh, current and past medication and allergies, and also important consent information such as resuscitation status, for example, would be really, really helpful to have in the right place uh, and in a timely fashion. Um, and in the future, perhaps records of individual episodes of care, you know, the actual patient notes might be incorporated within the blockchain as well. Um, it's also potentially quite good for patient empowerment. Um, patients can be given more direct control over the record and what is shared and who it is shared with and for how long it is shared with uh, said organizations or individuals. Um, and, uh, you know, in a world where data is increasingly valuable uh, for medical research purposes, for example, but also to companies wanting to get um, more commercially driven insights, potentially, uh, patients might choose to grant access uh, to research organizations to some or certain aspects of their medical record. And they might even receive payment for this, you know, sharing in the value. Uh, that we're all capturing uh, in our healthcare data. Now, there are obvious concerns here around confidentiality, data security, and the, the quality uh, of, uh, of the data. Uh, also, the understanding of the implications by patients of what they're doing when they're consenting to share information uh, and the potential for exploitation by all sorts of different parties. Um, and of course, let alone how realistic the implementation of all of this sounds in view of the, the healthcare record projects and um, IT money pits that we have experienced in the past in the UK, uh, but, but who knows. Um, and I suppose whilst we're acknowledging some of the criticisms uh, of blockchain technology, uh, I think it's um, important that we um, talk about some other aspects where there may be problems. Um, currently, blockchains are not user friendly to use. Uh, they can be really, really confusing to those um, and perhaps the majority of people out there who are not taking a keen interest in this area of technology. Um, and in addition, people worry about, and this is a big one, uh, worry about large energy consumption of blockchains. Uh, they can use more energy per year than some countries, in fact. Uh, the most popular blockchains use a concept called proof of work to underpin their security. 
and this is what drives a lot of the energy consumption. Uh, in order to operate and uh, add new blocks to the chain, a large amount of computing power needs to be deployed to solve cryptographic problems by all the miners out there. This means that in order for a single actor to go back and change something on the blockchain to their advantage, they would need to harness huge amounts of computing power requiring uh, such large amounts of computer hardware and, and energy in the real physical world that it makes it practically impossible to do, uh, thereby underpinning um, the security of the blockchains. Um, that being said, um, you know, advocates of uh, this proof of work uh, methodology uh, do have counter arguments to these environmental impact considerations. And, and there are some blockchains now that are adopting other methods to support security, such as proof of stake. Um, nonetheless, and, and uh, certainly acknowledging some of these drawbacks, uh, this area does still sound like there's quite a lot of potential and quite a lot of excitement um, for future benefits. Uh, so finally, for today, and perhaps what I think we'll be seeing first is the use of novel tokens to incentivize beneficial health behaviors and perhaps to incentivize charitable giving as well. So imagine for a moment that a charity, say the British Heart Foundation, partnered, partnered with an artist, uh, say Tracy Emin, could be another character, uh, could be another charity as well. Um, and they mint a limited edition art NFT, uh, which also grants ongoing free access to certain art galleries and perhaps access to special events as well, attended by celebrities, who knows? Um, and they sold these at auction to raise funds. Um, this would generate a lot of publicity as well. Um, and these tokens would probably have a resale value given the ongoing utility that they have for those that uh, can prove uh, that they are the owners of them. Uh, and they might include a smart contract feature in the NFT so that say 20% of all future onward sale values uh, of the NFT would automatically be deposited in uh, the charity's Ethereum wallet, for example, uh, thereby um, sort of capturing ongoing giving um, as part of the value of that token. Um, or perhaps on the other hand, um, the NHS app that lives on your smartphone uh, might allow those people checking uh, or clocking over 10,000 steps a day for 30 consecutive days to mint an NFT, which could be presented to your uh, favorite local partnering coffee chain for a free drink once a month. Uh, and that could run, say, for a year, if not indefinitely. Um, oh, and um, you could sell and transfer this to someone else, I guess, if you, if you didn't like uh, coffee and uh, get value um, in another way to yourself um, other than that of free coffee. So NFTs in healthcare, part of the future or just hype? Um, do let us know what you think um, in the comments below uh, via social media to myself and, and Gandhi. Um, if you found this video useful in any way, then please um, share it and spread the knowledge um, and we'll see you again soon.